Olympic team trials champion Kamal Bay. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Kamal, talk about the tournament itself before any specific questions. How did you feel out there? Uh, what were you looking for? Talk about it. Uh, yeah, the tournament, I think I wrestled really well. Um, getting back out there after the uh, Olympic qualifier, I didn't do so well. So, you know, just kind of like flipping the switch, trying to find opportunities to win. Uh, now that, that that's complete, you know, I'm just kind of getting ready for May. You know, got a lot of people to take out, so. You know, talk about that Olympic qualifier, you know, didn't go your way. What were the adjustments that you made in between the months of the qualifier to now to lead you to this? I mean, leading into the year, I've just been struck with a lot of misfortune. Um, some would say I was absent-minded uh, out there. I was kind of just wrestling on autopilot for a little bit. And uh, the difference maker was that uh, just the wrong things were said in that, uh, that Olympic qualifier match, you know, and it impeached on my peace and my calm, and I started wrestling angry. I've never wrestled angry before in my life, and I ended up uh, losing that match, you know. Um, so having my head back on my shoulders, being surrounded by my family, my teammates has been huge, and just kind of like, you know, uh, moving forward and uh, progressively trying to get better. Who helped you the most since then? Uh, right now, Coach Hodge. Coach Hodge, man, he uh, he's a he's a women's freestyle coach for the WCAP program, um, but he's, he's, like, he's like a father figure, like his words, just hit me deep in my heart and I knew I could do anything. Today I was kind of struggling because we finished uh, extremely late the other night. So, you know, having to gear back up and lose all that weight for day two. Hodge was there with me in the weight, in the, uh, in the weight room, fitness room of our hotel, helping me cut the weight, man. I was in there bawling my eyes out, man, because, you know, a lot of stuff in my heart was just building up. So, very emotional. I'm super thankful, Hodge, if you watch this. You know, back when you won that junior world, everybody wanted you to be the future of this program. How have you dealt with it? How much have you grown since then? Uh, it's a lot, you know, you, uh, I'm fortunate enough to have people who have done it, you know, uh, Tracy, Eldar, you know, good people in my corner, advisors, if you will, people who just like, you know, can tell me to keep continuing down the path, you know, it's not going to be, uh, it's not going to be, you know, come all Bay wrecking everything, you know, coming in fours, fives, whatever, it's going to be one, one matches that you got to win, the hard fight, so I'm thankful for those two, uh, especially just for like, you know, keeping my head on my shoulders. Misfortunes start here, like misfortunes in life, or just a so uh, I ended up making a clean sweep on uh, on uh, all the Greco uh, awards for the end of the year, and on that same day it was my birthday, yeah, yeah. and I ended up losing my little sister star. Uh, for me, uh, being a leader, it, it kind of hits a lot harder because you know you got to be accountable for all your siblings. She was a she was a hard worker. She was a beautiful girl. Um, still, it was just too soon. You know, if I could if I could go back, you know, I would in a, in a heartbeat. Um, after that, when I ended up losing one of my friends, uh, Gerald, uh, he was a referee in Colorado, uh, super huge. I, when I used to work with him, work with him all the time, he used to make me laugh. So that one struck in and I ended up losing my uncle um, a month ago when I was training in Croatia, my first day out there. So it's uh, a lot of loss, unfortunately, but you know, once again, family and teammates are the reason I was able to pull through. What would they say to you right now, the people that you were closest to about this moment? Yeah, you freaking did it. You freaking did it and you're going to continue to do it. You know, um, being a leader is like, no matter how I'm feeling, always got to take my best foot forward. You know, uh, I had a setback, like once again at the Olympic qualifier, but I'm, I'm coming in, I'm coming in May. I'm coming away, I'm bringing it to them. What do you do, what's your job roles with the uh, US Army and WCAS? Me, uh, so I, right now I just wrestle. But my, my MOS is 92 golf. I'm a culinary specialist. So uh, I cook pretty well, but my wife is way better. <laughs> what does it mean to you to wrestle at the Olympic trials? Uh, it's huge, man. Being, I had to sit out um, for the 21 Olympic trials uh, with my uh, band with USADA. So being able to come back and win it, like, it kind of just puts the stamp. Now all it's left to do is qualify it. You know, because I, I want to go. I want to be that guy in Paris. I know I can do. I know I can do well. I know I can do good. Congratulations, sir. Thank you. W Cap is everything, man. This that's my home. Like wrestling, I don't know for most people, but like wrestling is my peace. You know, and I got younger brothers on that team, younger sisters, older brothers on that team, and no matter what is happening outside in this world, I know when I come in that room, I'm loved. I know I'm appreciated. I know I'm celebrated. So thank you, W Cap, World Class Athlete Program. Thank you. When you had to deal with the USADA stuff, did you ever think about you know, stopping, not going for another Olympics? So what was your mindset? Absolutely not. I was just hungry, you know, trying to figure out. I've always been uh, a person who, who bounces back from bad things uh, pretty swiftly. With that one, I was just looking for a way to win, you know, and I got and I had to get the right people in my air who talked me into it. I got I did my basic training, my AIT, everything, and then they brought me in with open arms and they've loved me ever since. Do you mind sharing what your tattoo is on your, on your chest? Ambition. 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 Ambition, and the one on my back is uh, strength and perseverance.
It was the three things my dad said a man should always have. Ambition, strength, and perseverance. How long have you had those? Oh, for a minute. I can't tell you my age when I got them. You know, I was, I was a kid. I was a kid in Illinois, man. We did a lot of things. My dad worked the graveyard. My mom worked morning, so I had a lot of free time in between to just do whatever. But when my mom first saw the tattoo, she's like, you've been, you've been wearing a shirt in the house for months now. Like, you, you never have your shirt on in the house. She's like, what you got under there? And I was like, what you talking about? Mom, and she ripped it off me. She's like, you got a tattoo. I was like, yeah. Yeah, it was a... It was a conversation. It was a conversation that extended to when my dad got home. <laughs> oh yeah, both my mom and dad, both in my life. They're here right now. Uh, they're always the loudest people in the crowd. Usually when I'm like wrestling, I'm like locked in. All I can hear is like my coaches, uh, my coaches, and then I just hear my dad in the stands just barking. And I'm just like, all right, it's time to go. It's time to go. All right, I'm just say like, hit it. And I'm like, I don't even have anything locked up. But I'm like, okay, I got it. Good coaching. A uh, huge foundation. I mean, Illinois is just like, man, it's just a pool of talent. So many young dudes are in there just super athletic, super talented, really intelligent. And uh, they all just kind of like sharpen each other, man. Like I was fortunate enough to have one of the best rooms being Oak Park and River Forest. We were the number one team in the country and everybody in there was ranked top 10 in the, in the, in the country. So like practices were always hard, super intense, but it was fun because it was with your, your, your bros, it was with your team, you know, everybody beating each other up and then you go play basketball or something afterwards, you know. Um, so, yeah, Illinois does a great job of just, you know, raising raising his kids to be, uh, you know, uh, good, good civilians, good civilians and just good in the community. It looks like you guys have all the spots locked up except for heavyweight, so that sounds like all dubs, no cap. All dubs, no cap. I mean, we got we had uh, one guy from the uh, All Army. His name is Jeremiah, man. He is a he is a good wrestler, dude. He is a good wrestler, super talented, and super nice, man. Like invite him over to my house. We watched the Doom movie, and then we went to the theaters and we watched Doom too. So like that's how quick W Cap clicks. It's just like hey, you like to fight, we like to fight too, and we'll fight for you. So. <laughs> okay, so.